Hello everyone, welcome. We're live. It's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio with another community Q&A. This is your chance to ask questions and get help with your DJing. If you're live with us on YouTube, Facebook or Twitch, you can do that right now. Ask your question. They all come through to me here. If you're watching the recording, you can ask your questions underneath the video on Facebook or YouTube and my team will get to you. Or even better, you can join us for the next one live. We go live in school term time at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern every week with these. As the leading online DJ school, we are the best place to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. So do hang around. It's uh, always good fun to present these at the end of a long working day uh, and I will tell you how you can become closer to what we do here at Digital DJ Tips as well in a little while. Meanwhile though, how are you? How's it going folks? It's been great fun here today. We've been recording uh, more lessons for our Record Box 6 Made Easy course which is coming out very soon. We've been teaching mapping today so we've been using the XP2 uh, and a DJ uh, controller here, the Flex 4, and showing how you can remap your pads, how you can remap your MIDI controls and all this kind of thing. So We've had a lot of fun in the studio teaching this stuff today. I have to tell you, this is the main record box manual. And we have got through all 250 pages of it. I've printed it out four pages to a one, page, one piece of paper. Um, and we've got through all 250 pages of that manual. It's all been taught. It's got the big tick on it there. Uh, there's a lot more because there's lots of supplementary manuals and stuff that we've got to teach as well. But we're getting near the end of the course, which is very exciting. Uh, that's launching at the end of June. So looking forward to that. Uh, while I'm waiting for you to type your questions in, and I can see lots of questions already appearing, which is great. Hello, everyone. I'll get to you in a second. Uh, let's just share a bit more news quickly what's going on on the website. So we've got music file formats for DJs. If you're always uh, finding yourself a bit confused by music file formats, head over to digitaldjtips.com and click down there to read that. Also, we've got news from Traktor about new pattern player kits and other stuff that they've added to Traktor software recently. So some stuff over on the website if you're interested after this to go and have a read of. Uh, and personally, I have to share with you some great news which is my daughter, who's 10, is DJing tomorrow night at her school disco. And I've been down there today with her teacher in the assembly hall setting up. We've set her up with a Denon DJ Prime 4 uh, on Tidal so she can stream all her tunes because she, she's not interested in buying music. Uh, we've got an Ethernet connection rock solid there, uh, which took a bit of work uh, because it turned out that unless the time and date were correct in the Den and DJ Prime 4 apps. We were talking about apps that you can use in your DJ. And someone said, why don't you have a central place where you list all the apps that we recommend for DJs? It's an interesting question. We don't do that because really, I don't think you necessarily need any apps at all apart from your DJing app. But the apps, if you were to ask me, which ones have you got on your phone right now for your music? Uh, mine will be the music apps, like I use Tidal and so on, so I've got those on my phone. I've also got Rekordbox for iOS on my phone, you can get it for Android as well, where you can uh, not only use it as a little DJ app, but more importantly, you can keep all your music in the cloud as long as you've got a subscription version of that software. And so you can be working on your cue points on your phone and they're all waiting for you when you get to your music, even when you get to record box equipment in the Pro DJ booth, because nowadays you can log into networked equipment in the Pro DJ booth and all your music is there, not only your um, uh, you know, you don't only have to have it on a USB, you can have it there ready and waiting for you, which is pretty cool. So I would say it's the music apps that I go for nowadays, um, and they're the ones that uh, I would recommend you have a little play with if you, uh, you want some fun music apps for your phone. Uh, apart from that, the music stuff I've got on my phone is not really to do with DJing, it's just other stuff that I use. Um, so what other apps might we use when we're DJing? I honestly think that's about it. I mean, obviously we've all got a copy of Algorithms DJ Pro AI, right? It's just one of those apps that everyone likes to have on their phone. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, what apps do you use? Maybe share, maybe let us know what apps you use on your, um, on your uh, phone, on your tablet, as well as your DJ software. It'd be interesting to know. Uh, right, so um, the uh, next question I've got live then is from, this one is from Brian, uh, who said, uh, I asked a question about the Flex 4 and the BPM slider. Yeah, but unfortunately, I think I lost all those questions when we were dealing with that issue there. So maybe you can, uh, maybe you can ask it again, and I'll try and get to you there. Uh, Johnny says, can we have a lesson in setting up audio for live streams? Yes. 
charge your batteries properly before you go live. Uh, I thought they were. It's a classic, isn't it? You've got it plugged in overnight and it's normally fine, 99 times out of 100 until the time it isn't. Um, I never rely on batteries, but I don't do remotes. It says you don't like my music. Oh, we live, we live with, our, with our wireless microphones here. Always running around the studio and doing different things. As I say, they normally work fine. Uh, right, Alan on Facebook. Hi, Phil. I've always wondered what's the reason that big clubs prefer to use Pioneer DJ, CDJ, 3000s and DJMA9 mixers rather than professional standalone systems like the XZ or the RX3, which are simpler. What's the reason behind this? Yes, so look, here we have a professional club system, an A9 mixer, thousands, CDJ 3000s, thousands. Why do clubs use these? Two reasons. Reason number one, that's what it's asked for by the top DJs. And if it's what's asked for, then it's what they have to provide. Reason number two, it's modular. And that means that if anything breaks, they can replace just the thing that broke. That's really, really important because any big club has got a whole second set of that stuff. And so if one of the CDJs breaks, out it goes, in goes a new one, off it goes for service. You can't do that with a standalone like a, an XDJ XZ or a RX3. That said, uh, we were in Manchester in England recently um, and noticed that in all, I mean, I say all, pretty much all the bars and so on that we went into, they all had an XDJ RX3. All the DJs seem to be using RX3s. So the smaller two channel RX3 seems to have really taken off in small venues as a kind of replacement for a big pro setup like this one here. So yeah, it's an interesting one, um, but mainly it's the modular thing, I think. It's uh, the fact that it, it is important to have something where you can switch out just the bit that needs servicing or just the bit that's not working properly, I would say anyway. Um, so Tom says, hi Phil, can I play real player files on my CDJ 3000s? Most of my classic dubs are stuck in that format. I've got no idea what the real player format is. Anyone help? Uh, I guess it's quite old. I would definitely, uh, if it is a format that isn't one of the big ones that we mentioned, in fact, that we mentioned in that article that we were just um, talking about uh, at the beginning of this show before we got so rudely cut off. Um, uh, if it's not any of the formats that are mentioned in this article, which are the lossless formats, WAV, IAFF, the uh, lossless but compressed formats, FLAC and ALAC, uh, or the lossy compressed formats, MP3 and AOC. If your files aren't in any of those, I would strongly suggest you convert them. Find a converter program that can turn them into uh, a decent file format that's modern uh, and do it that way because um, I mean, I have no idea what, the, what that format is, but it, it does ring a bell, but it's a very uh, old bell, a very dim bell in my head. So, uh, so yeah, I'm not sure what that is. So apparently a confirmation from the man who is always my savior in things like this, Mixmaster G, you cannot play real audio files. They need to be converted to something like MP3, um, but the quality is likely to be rather low of the real audio files. Uh, right, okay. So let's grab another question. Uh, this one is from uh, this one is from Brian. Um, I don't use the sync button um, on my Flex 4. Okay, uh, the speed slider is incredibly sensitive and jumps numbers in large quantities even when I slide very slowly. Any way to adjust that? Yes, there is a way to adjust that. Let's have a look at it. I might even have Recordbox open so I can show you how to adjust that. Uh, yes, it is open. And indeed, on this particular controller here that I've got set up, um, I could probably show you the controller and the, let's do that. Show you the controller and the software. There we go. We've got a teaching view here. We've been teaching today, so I've still got the teaching view kind of set up. Uh, right, so this is a Recordbox controller and you can see Recordbox software above, right? So if I turn on this deck here, My speed control is really, really sensitive, right? The tiniest touch of that is giving me a massive change in speed. And that is very simple. There's a very simple explanation for that. It's because, and you're gonna to have to look carefully because I can't zoom in when we're live here. It's because see where my uh, mouse is going in circles here? See this word wide? If you click on that word wide, it changes and I can change it to, it's now changed to plus minus 6%. Now, it 
it's only going up and down by half a dozen BPMs when I move it up and down. And by clicking on that button over and over again, I can have different settings all the way back up to the wide setting. The point is that the reason that you're finding that you're not getting an easy way of adjusting your, uh, your slider is that you've got it set to wide. And wide is massive BPM movements. So go and do that, it's as simple as that. And all DJ software has got that same adjustment on it, by the way, so it's possible to change it, whatever your software. It's just one of those things that's actually really useful if you're doing a lot of open format DJing and you've got a lot of uh, tracks that are in different BPMs and you like to do big BPM shifts and so on, uh, that's all possible that way. However, uh, that will stop you manu manually beat mixing properly uh, because, of course, Every time you tap that, you're moving like four BPMs or something, right? Uh, okay, so um, I am gonna grab another live question here. I'm just trying to scroll through them all. So you can sometimes, if you put the hashtag ask, hashtag ASK, uh, I can find your questions more easily because especially when there's a lot of you wonderful, wonderful people saying, Phil, we can't hear you. Uh, that's all I can see, Phil, we can't hear you. Uh, right, so. Uh, how long an audio run, how long a cable would you use for RCA before interference can be an issue? Great question from DJ Randall or Randy L on, or Randall L on uh, YouTube. Uh, it depends. I've had controllers here where we've got, uh, here at the, in the studio, we've got a um, simple RCA cable that runs out of the back of the controllers into our live mixer and then onto our broadcast or our uh, production computer. Uh, this works fine most of the time with most DJ controllers. It's about three meters, I think. Sometimes we get a bit of buzz and hum. Our Flex 6, for some reason, is a bit hummy uh, on this, uh, but most stuff is fine with it. Uh, if you use balance connections, you're unlikely to get that. So my uh, advice would be always stick to, uh, I'd say, no more than three meters. Um, you know, you, there's a reason why, if you look at a pro DJ setup, like the Pioneer one we've got here, for instance, uh, there's a reason why uh, it's just RCA sockets around the back back to plug into the CDJs and so on because they're only short cables and only short cables it really doesn't make any difference but when you're starting to run long cables or the cables are running through areas where there might be a lot of electrical interference then it becomes kind of more more useful to have uh, balance cables and balance cables are the XLRs right they're the ones that have got the big three pins on them uh, or the alternatively they look like a, an old-fashioned headphone socket the big ones uh, and they are designed to keep interference to a minimum. So if you're using a long run to a PA system or something, they're definitely the ones to go for. And of course, that's why uh, on uh, systems like this, cheap controllers, you don't get them because they don't think that you're ever gonna need that. You just get the normal RCA outputs, but you do get that on more expensive controllers. Thanks for the questions. Good question, that one. Uh, so let's grab another live question. And this one then has come in from, he says, uh, bullying while he, try, while he tries to find one to read out. Uh, I'm a little bit flustered because, uh, like I say, it's lovely that you all tell me when we go off air or something goes wrong, but uh, as, soon as, uh, as soon as that happens, that's all I can see in the live questions. Now, this is from Paul on, on YouTube. Does the paid record box app for Android work on PC laptop as the prices are different? Android was $4.99 and the laptop, I think, is $9.99 a month. No, it's not the case, unfortunately. You subscribe to Rekordbox on your computer, Mac or Windows, and then whichever one you subscribed on, you can use it on any laptop computer. That's all good. Unfortunately, if you want to use the app on your phone, you have to subscribe again. You don't get the other one when you subscribe to the first one. For instance, Algorithms DJ Pro AI, one subscription, use it everywhere you want. Phone, tablet, iOS. And that's not the case with your, uh, with your Record box gear with your record box gear, it's one subscription for laptop and one subscription, unfortunately, for the, uh, for the version that you use on your phone. So it's a bit of a shame that, but that's just how it is, I'm afraid. They want your money. Uh, so Jermaine on YouTube says, Hi Phil, I just played my first corporate gig. It went fantastic. And I took all of your advice and the company wants to book me again in winter and next spring. That's absolutely brilliant. Good stuff. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that. So Jesse, my controller does not give output audio on the second channel any help. So again, I'm not, you know, we're not a Pioneer DJ channel or anything. It's just that we're literally in the middle of recording a Pioneer DJ course. And so I've got all the Pioneer DJ stuff open here. What you're looking for is something like this. You go to the top of your software and find the audio settings. You need to check that the decks are 
properly set up here because if you haven't got the deck set up right here you will find that you're not getting the proper audio coming out so install the drivers install the firmware make sure everything's up to date make sure you've got the audio setting here set to the unit you're using so in this case it's the flex 4 uh, but once you've done that check the output master and headphones output are set to what they should be set to because if they're not then you're not going to get the correct audio coming out that would be the first place i check so in that order drivers firmware and then audio settings in your software. And as I say, all software has something similar. So that would be certainly where I go first if I was stuck on this stuff. Um, right, let's grab another live question. Uh, and this one is from Sony Man, who is a Serato Pro user. And Sony Man's question is this. At the center top of the screen in DJ Serato Pro, what do those skinny color lines mean? mean they look similar to beat grid line colors what do the skinny color lines mean at the top of serato dj pro and uh, i don't know because i haven't got serato dj pro open uh, but we're going to open it should we go and open it and look what the skinny color lines mean at the top i'm just trying to think off the top of my head but it's a little while since i've seen serato uh, so yeah let's go and have a look let's go and have a look at serato together and see if we can figure out what the skinny color lines mean at the top of the screen so i'm going to load a couple of tracks onto my serato uh, i think you probably mean these lines here right i'm guessing this is what you mean these are just the big waveform so this is the whole waveform the whole track whereas here we've got the bit that we're currently playing. Here, we've got the whole track, so you can see where your cue points are, and you can see where the track begins and ends and where the breakdowns are coming as well. So that means that if you're, you know, if you're here, you're in a different part of the track than if you're here. So I'm guessing this is, this is what you mean. I can't see any other skinny waveforms at the top there. We'll try another view. Let's try the horizontal view and see if, ah, you could mean these. Yes, okay, you could mean these. Right, so these waveforms, are just a very simple way of showing you where the beats are in your track. So when the tracks are playing, uh, these don't move, but they do show you if the beats are lined up. So it's just another way of lining your beats up. It's kind of like automates, um, gives you a visual view of what's going on audibly. Uh, so that could be what it is. So when you move the BPMs, when you move the, um, uh, the, uh, the faders to make the track go up or down in BPM here, then what happens here is that these move, the red ones will move for the left deck and the yellow ones for the right deck. So that could be what you mean. So think of them as just kick drums, but they don't move. So they're not scrolling past and it makes it easier for you to see if those kick drums are lining up or if one track's a bit faster than the other. That could be what you mean. These are a similar thing actually, but these do scroll past when you're, when you're actually playing tracks. You know, guys, girls, I love these. I love these live shows because we do get to talk about all kinds of stuff and uh, we do get to think on our feet, even if the audio disappears, uh, which is always a shame, of course. Anyway, you don't like my music. Uh, that, there's a problem on my mix on 4 and on DJ Pro. I'm manually adjusting the tempo, but it can be tricky. However, I just use the sync button uh, to match the BPM and then turn it off afterwards. We're talking about this problem with moving your pitch faders in order to manually beat mix. So yeah, that's an idea. You know, just quick tap of the BPM, get them together and then turn it off if you rather DJ without the um, without the sync on. Um, do the settings maintain even when the track is changed when you do that? Yes, when you change your, um, your um, I don't know the exact word for it, tempo range, they're called tempo range controls. Yes, so if you change the tempo range on your faders uh, to be 6% or whatever, it will, stay, it will definitely uh, stay there until you do uh, another change. It won't, it won't disappear when you change the track for certain. Right. Let's grab another question. Uh, we are going, I think, to Fred now, who says, is the Pioneer DJ, DDJ Wego, the smallest controller in the world? I'd like to see something as portable as the Reloop Buddy, uh, but that works with Rekordbox. Something like the Starlight, um, just straight from the laptop. Yeah, so, you know, the smallest controllers in the world that are mainstream are things like the Hercules Starlight or this little one here. This is the um, Newmark uh, DJ to go to. Uh, but none of them work with record box. The smallest record box controller is probably the Pioneer DJ Wego, but it's quite old now. Um, so yeah, I can't think of a mini 
Brickle Box controller. Frankly, once you're starting to get down to that kind of size, I'd prefer to just map everything to my laptop keyboard and DJ from there because it's so unusable, those tiny little controllers, that uh, it just start, stops being fun. Um, so I think that may be, why, may be why they don't bother making them because they're just a little bit, I don't know, a little bit fiddly. DJing's about kind of spreading out a bit and having the controls there like we were talking about earlier uh, in my view. Uh, so Knuckle, D Knuckle Drum and Bass on YouTube says, uh, um, I think I'm pretty good in mashing up my tunes and so on by now, but there are some acapellas I just can't get on beat. What am I missing? Uh, so the acapella could be that it's, it's not on beat, right? That could be the first thing. Uh, but the second thing is one of the best ways to beat grid acapellas is to get the original track on the other deck. So if you get the original track on one deck and get the acapella on the other and then get them playing well together, then you can kind of like you can see where the BPM is meant to be and you can see where the first grid line is meant to be from the original track and then you can go and put that BPM, dial that BPM into the acapella, put your first grid line in the beat grid system in the right place and then the grid should be right all the way through. So cheating by playing the acapella over the original is the way that I've always beat gridded difficult acapellas. I hope that helps. Uh, this is from The Doc, who says, uh, I've just successfully mapped record box stems to my DDJ-1000. Uh, it works quite well with my M1 Mac. Um, I do get the usual bleeding and distortion between the vocals. Uh, I don't see any difference in live stem separation between Serato, Recordbox, and DJ. Well, there is difference. Recordbox only has three stems, the others have four, and Recordbox does sound a little bit worse than the others at the moment. I don't think it will forever, but it does at the moment. And by the way, here's a tip for you. If you're a Recordbox user and you've got a Recordbox controller like this, uh, which doesn't have any buttons on for stems, it's easy to map them. Uh, and unless I've uh, turned it off and changed the mapping, uh, this one's actually mapped that way. Look at the stems controls here. This is for the drums, vocals and instruments on this track that I've currently got loaded, right? So by pressing these buttons here, I can make the drums, vocals and instrument instruments come and go on this track. But I can also do it on these pads. And actually, I, it's on the beat jump. I've remapped it to this beat jump here. So look on the screen, where my mouse is kind of doing little circles. These pads are turning it off and on now. So let's press play again. I think I'm actually starting Serato with this, bizarrely. Uh, anyway, um, that's how it easy it is to map them to the pads. You just need to go into the MIDI mapper and then you can take any pad mode that you don't use and change it. It's in our new Record Box 6 Made Easy course where we talk about MIDI mapping and pad editing and so on. Uh, it's very, very simple. So you can, now in this instance, I took Beat Jump and I just remapped the stems controls to there. And you can map all the clever ones. So you can map the uh, the effect stems where it separates the track into drums, vocals and, um, and instruments and then you choose which ones go through the effects and all that stuff. Have them all on the pads. So even though the Flex 10, wonderful though it is, where's our Flex 10? Now it's not nearby or I'd, I'd do the old hold it up. Now even though the Flex 10 is the only DJ controller that's got the stems control on it at the moment from Pioneer DJ, you needn't let that stop you as long as you've got a Pioneer DJ record box controller, you can remap something you don't use and you use stems on it that way. As I say, it's in our record box six made easy course that we're in the middle of making at the moment, uh, which is, believe it or not, coming out at the end of the month. Quite scary, because we're still making it. Uh, but hey, we thrive on that stuff. All uh, right, let's grab some more questions. Um, any experience, says DJ Gulyat on Facebook, with Soundbox Bluetooth speakers? Do you believe it would be a good idea for a public show wirelessly? Right, so. Soundbox speakers are a good brand, a very loud speaker, literally very loud speaker. They are well made, they're certainly good enough to DJ parties and so on with. They are unique in that they've got wireless technology in them which is not Bluetooth. So you've called them Bluetooth and they have got Bluetooth in them but that's no good for DJing. They've got a wireless technology in them that's actually based around this tech that I've got here called SCAR. So SCAR is 
a box that you plug into your DJ controller that broadcasts wirelessly, and one you plug into your PA system that receives. Now, SCAR is built into these speakers from the company called Soundbox, so you don't need the receiver. You only need the transmitter, and you plug your DJ controller into the transmitter, and it transmits wirelessly from where you are to the speaker. Now, of course, you could just plug your DJ controller into the speaker with a normal wire. But then what these speakers can do is they use this technology, again, it's built in, they use this technology to speak to each other. So you can have a couple of these speakers um, and you don't need wire between them at all, which can be really useful. You know, pool parties, outdoors and stuff, you don't want to be running wires all around the place. Sometimes it's hard to run them safely. And so the speakers can communicate with each other over a much lower latency connection. The problem with Bluetooth is you can tell. The problem with Bluetooth is you go like this, but it doesn't sound like that. The sound comes out a little bit later, right? This is more or less instant. It doesn't work like that with Bluetooth. And so you need to have a way of doing it wirelessly if wireless is important to you that isn't Bluetooth. And SCAR, S-K-A-A, -A, is, is the way that, uh, that the sound box speakers work. And that's unique. They're the only speakers that have got that. So yes, if you're interested in that, it does work. It's not instant, instant, instant. You can kind of just about tell, but it's doable. Okay, so yes, I think they're pretty cool. Uh, right, so let's grab a question here from our Facebook group from Global DJ Network. This is um, uh, about DJ etiquette. Funnily enough, we published an article about DJ etiquette just the other day. Uh, and you can still see that article about DJ etiquette over on the Digital DJ Tips website. Uh, again, if you want to read uh, that or any of our amazing articles, head over there uh, and you'll find uh, all the latest stuff is listed down here. Uh, and one of them recently is a DJ etiquette article, although I can't actually see it at the moment. Maybe it's been pushed Pushed further down, we've published too much stuff. No problem though, always to search our like six or 7,000 articles, click the little magnifying glass at the top and type in the word that you want, etiquette. And then here we go, here's DJ etiquette articles. Um, how not to behave in the DJ booth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've got lots of them. And actually, I can't see the one we just published, so maybe they're, they're working on it and it'll be back very shortly. Uh, however, um, this is a question about etiquette, so guess what? We can answer it live for you, because that's what we do. Uh, so the question was this. Uh, coming on after another DJ, is there etiquette regarding plugging in a new controller when the other DJ is still playing? So the etiquette is very simple what would you like someone to do if it was them and you? Uh, and usually the answer is, one, know what you're gonna do. Don't just turn up and say, oh, I've got a plug in now. How, how am I gonna set up? Oi, oi, DJ, how am I gonna set up? Help me with this. That's no good, right? So know what you're gonna do, have a plan. Um, don't waste any time, so don't turn up 45 minutes early and sit there saying, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. Do you mind if I just have a look at them? Oh yeah, okay, okay we can do that, yeah. And, and then we'll do that. I just need to get under there and have a look. If, uh, none of that. Turn up five minutes before and know what you're gonna do so that you're not upsetting the flow of the DJ who's already on. And usually, usually what DJs do is they'll plug into a spare channel on the existing mixer with their controller. So for instance, if we are on, uh, we're in a DJ booth and we've got our own controller set up and the DJ is currently playing, if the DJ is actually DJing and they tend to be using decks two and three most of the time, then five minutes before when they've got one or two songs left, your, your question is going to be, can I plug into channel four, please? And they'll be like, yeah, fine. And so you get quick lead around the back to channel four, out into your controller, bang, you're done. And then you stay away from them and you get your first record ready. And then when it's time for you to come on, you head back to here uh, and you fade out their track nicely, get the cheer for them, put yours up, and then hit play on your deck. And so that's the usual way, finding a spare channel on the controller where they're not going to need it for the next five minutes, the last few minutes of their set, and plug in and go that way. Uh, a lot of DJs like to have a prepared beginning to their set. So James Hype has a piece he plays at the beginning of all his sets. He literally hits play on it, and it gives him time to thank the other DJ, get him out of the way, get set up, get his headphones in, get his IEMs in, uh, be ready, and then play his first song, right? So it's a good idea to do that. It's a good idea to have the first song lined up. But really, it's just about how would you want to be treated? And as long as you're considerate and you're prepared and you're professional, in other words, you know what you're going to do, 
I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. Nowadays, DJs are used to everyone turning up with all kinds of gear and having to switch over. But I tell you what, if you're pleasant and considerate and competent, you'll be remembered because there is nothing worse than having your set spoiled by a DJ who is none of those things. Uh, right, we've only got a few minutes left, folks. Uh, so I'm going to just quickly grab a few more of these. Um, this is from Milu, who says, I'm looking for a DVS system that will work on and play music directly off an iPad. Um, so I'd also need to buy an interface like an Audio 6 or something. Any recommendations? Uh, so the main one that I recommend on iPad is uh, Algorithms DJ Pro AI. And as long as you've got a mixer that's got a built-in audio interface, so I keep showing you this one here, but it's not the only one. This is a DJM A9, of course, in Pioneer DJ. But there's other mixers with built-in audio interfaces, like this one here. Far cheaper, far cheaper option. The little Numark... Uh, Scratch. Uh, I'm pretty sure that all of these will work with Algorithm. As long as you can plug a computer into it, as long as it's got a socket for plugging a computer in, which these have because they're also controllers. Uh, there it is, the USB socket on the back. Uh, you plug, you get the correct adapter to plug the USB socket into your iPad, uh, and then you launch Algorithm's DJ Pro. Plug your record decks in, bang, you're off. You, 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 you're ready to go. Um, so no, most DJs nowadays don't buy an audio interface. They buy a mixer and then do it that way because look, as soon as you've got turntable is you're going to want a mixer in the middle, right? You're not actually going to move that crossfader on your software screen. You want a proper mixer. And then have your iPad mounted at the back and you're ready to go. Our tutor DJ Angelo recently did a set at, our, at um, IMS in Ibiza and he played uh, with record decks, with algorithms, got its own time code. So this is time code vinyl, right? This is what you need in order to DJ with any DVS system. Special vinyl that's made for your particular DVS system usually uh, and that vinyl will let you uh, control it. Algorithm has its own, right? So you're going to need some control vinyl, a couple of turntables and a mixer. But for instance, that little one there, I think it's 499. Uh, it's a Serato mixer. And I think it comes with Serato as well. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but also will, I'm sure, work fine with Algorithm. Someone will correct me before the end of this live stream if I'm wrong about that. Happy to be wrong sometimes, but uh, I hope I'm right about that anyway. Uh, right, so uh, the next live question is from one of our last live questions today, actually, because um, I've got to go. But Flow Vibe on Facebook says, I just got a Reloop RMX95 mixer. Good mixer. It's actually the same one, I think, that uh, I think it's the same one that, uh, that Angelo uses in that video. Anyway, by the way, if you want to see DJ Angelo DJing with DVS on a phone, uh, head to DJ Angelo's YouTube channel and you'll see that video there. It's pretty cool. Um, so I just got a Reloop RMX95 mixer, says Flow Vibe Alex, and I'm wondering whether it's common that club mixers like Pioneer can only apply one effect to one channel at a time, as opposed to simultaneous effects on multiple channels, as can be done on smaller controllers. Yes. It is pretty usual that that happens. So funnily enough, this is, a, um, this is a DJ controller, but Pioneer DJs, DJ controllers nowadays are laid out to look and feel like you're using club gear. So I'm going to just zoom in on this so you can see a little bit better. Uh, I'm trying to, get that, I'm trying to get that XP2 out of the way from there. Let's zoom in on this, get it nice and sharp so you can see what I'm talking about. So club mixers are similar to the layout here. So you have down here, the beat effects. These are the effects that you turn on and off using this button here, and they're applied to your channels, and you choose whether you want them to go to the, to the master output or, or to individual channels, but they can only be one at a time. But you also get the effects on these buttons here, uh, on these knobs here. And again, these are individual to the channels, so these are actually only a filter on this control. Actually, they're not, you can change them. So this applies to this channel, and this applies to this channel. But again, uh, when you have it set, it's only one per channel normally. Now, there are ways of changing this in software, but for argument's sake, on a hardware mixer like this, uh, you are stuck to one channel per effect. So even on the top, 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 top mixers like this, this one down here, you can choose which channel you want it on, or the master output, or the sampler, or the, um, you know, the microphone, or whatever the choices are. And this one here, again, you can only have on one channel. You know, what's happened with effects is, I think that people have realized less is, less is more here. 
Uh, and so while in software you can do all kinds of weird and wonderful things, on hardware it tends to be a little bit simpler. And nowadays, even in the, on, the, on the equipment, even though the software can do an awful lot, you tend to find that the equipment gives you simplified controls because they're trying to make it more usable. I think that's kind of like the, the way they're going with it. So take it or leave it on that one. I, I, I actually prefer the slightly simpler but more usable effects. Uh, this is from Stevie on YouTube. You mentioned a new app called DJ Studio for YouTube a few weeks ago. Will this work on all devices, PC, laptop, Apple, iPhone, Android? Is it copyright and free to use? Wow, Stevie, it's only in beta. It's only a beta program. It's not even been released yet. So I can't answer that. Even the uh, developers can't answer that. Go to dj.studio, sign up for their beta download it, have a play. They've got feedback there so you can talk to the developers, ask all those questions to them. I'm sure they'd love to do all those things, mGuru, but uh, right now uh, it is, sorry, not mGuru. Um, who was it? Who was it? I don't know, my uh, computer's kind of frozen for a second. Stevie, Stevie D, sorry about that, Stevie. Uh, yes, uh, so mGuru, to your question, any experiences with Opus Quad USB ports stopping responding, um, especially the top one? Um, and you have to take it for repair or return. It appears to be a common experience. No, I haven't, but I always like to hear about these things because I can, uh, I, I now know about it. So if I hear about it again, uh, I'll know that it is indeed, as you say, a bit of a common thing. Um, so finally then, I just got to end with uh, one more question because I do have to go, unfortunately. Uh, this one is from DJ Graphology on YouTube. Um, I'm a Serato Pro user, first time as well. Hello, DJ. Griffology. I'm a Serato Pro user. I just recently purchased the Mixstream Pro Go as a backup. Uh, is there a system to have the engine music files to match the Serato files? Um, so, yes, you can. The short answer is yes, you can. And Mixmaster G, who is on this chat here on YouTube with you now, DJ Griffology, makes software that lets you do this. So do go and take a look at Mix, Mixmaster G's software. Um, he's got a Denon conversion utility, I think it's called, that can do that for you. And uh, yeah, I mean, to me, you really want to be keeping your DJ life simple. I don't think it's clever to be continually moving your stuff from system to system. Pick a system and stick with it uh, would be my advice. Uh, but yes, it is possible to do that. And uh, you want to look at the utilities made by uh, Mixmaster G. Um, if, you, if you found his DJ conversion utility and his Denon, I think it's called just called the Denon conversion utility, he'll be able to help you there. Uh, people, got to go. I'm training for a marathon. I'm running a marathon in three weeks and I've got a 13 mile run to go and get done now. And it's sticky as hell out there. It's really humid out there. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I've got to go and get that done before it gets dark. So listen, sorry about the uh, few minutes where we didn't have any, any audio. Um, I don't really know why. It looks like it's charging now. Uh, here's our charger. Aha. Yeah, it's charging. The battery light's flashing. So maybe it just wasn't plugged in properly. Anyway, uh, the uh, moral of this story is check more carefully. And I will check more carefully next time. You live and learn and you're never perfect, as we found out today. Uh, so until next time, which will be on Tuesday next week, where we'll have another live lesson. This is Phil in the studio saying get good, get out there, make the moments. Till then, bye-bye.